All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. All right. That's a little better. Thank you. My name is Frank Malfitano. I just want to take a moment to welcome you all to St. Peter's for tonight's memorial tribute to the great Ronnie Cuber. And I want to acknowledge the producers of tonight's event, Roberta Arnold, formerly Roberta Cuber. Stand, come on. The Jazz Foundation of America and of course, St. Peter's Church. Thanks for, all, uh, for being here. We have a wonderful program for you. We'll be talking to you throughout the night, okay? Have a great time. I met Ronnie in 1967, no, 68, summer 68, on Woody Herman's band. Uh, the saxophone section was Ronnie, Sal Nistico, Frank Vicari, and myself. I was a, a good sight reader, and the information in that saxophone section was about two-thirds of what was written on the page. There were so many little subtle nuances and stuff that they did together. And it was so much fun playing with that saxophone section. Uh, of course, playing with those guys, uh, you know, a recurring theme in, in a lot of instrumental players is what the hell am I doing here, you know? But, but that was a fun band to play with. And, you know, that, I'm just going to tell a few stories about my time with Ronnie. Because I played with Ronnie with Woody, and then when I moved to New York, we started playing. I was playing with Eddie Palmieri's band. And then we started in the studios, and then Saturday Night Live. And then we started playing with Dr. John, with Lou Soloff, and, and Ronnie and myself as the horn section for years and years. And then at the same time, we were playing with John Tropez's band in various permutations and so many other gigs. And, and I hired Ronnie a lot of times for gigs that I did. Um, so we had a tremendous history of playing together. But one thing about Ronnie was that when you were playing with it, I, I meant to say I was a good sight reader and, and I love ensemble playing. 
And Ronnie was just the best at playing and finding you and coming to a consensus when you played together. You know, he was a delight to play with always and always listening. So, you know, here I'm a green kid and uh, 22, I think, and we're in Denver at Elitch's Gardens. It's 1968. Ronnie's hair is long. He's wearing his band uniform with his shirt halfway open. He's got some kind of medallions or stuff hanging down. And some little lady comes up to him and she goes, how's come your hair so long? And Ronnie looks down at her and he says, because you're not used to it. <laughs> we were playing, uh, we did this gig at Catch a Rising Star, Richard Belzer was the host, and Joe Piscopo was doing his Frank Sinatra imitation. So we were basically, it was, it was pre-recorded, so Alan Rubin and Ronnie and Lawrence Feldman and I were just playing. I think we actually played, but, but there was a big soundtrack going on. But before that, we played a couple tunes live with our horn section and the rhythm section that was there. And one of the tunes was a blues, it was a blues in F, and Ronnie started his solo on a concert F, high D on the baritone, so he's, he's holding the horn here. And the microphone starts to slip. And so Ronnie is, he's going like. <laughs> but he fixed the microphone immediately, you know. But he, he milked the solo. He kept futzing with the mic for a whole chorus, you know, and then it was just fantastic. <laughs> And, you know, Ronnie, Ronnie could be difficult, uh, let's face it. One time we were playing with Trope, and uh, I was playing a solo on a Don Grolnick tune, a beautiful tune called Seventh Heaven. And in the middle of my solo, Ronnie starts playing this very aggressive, loud, made-up background part behind my solo. And when I finished my solo, I turned to him, I said, what was that, you know? And Ronnie laughed. He said, well, I, I thought your solo was lacking in energy, so I was trying to pump it up a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, one little, one little last one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show you a clip. Back in those days, um, I was the first kid on the block to have one of those RCO, RCA VHS cameras, the big camera you had to put on your shoulder and a big cassette heavy deck and carry it around. But I, I filmed a lot of stuff and, uh, and I remember that I had some something from backstage. It was some kind of special that we did. It wasn't the Saturday Night Live Band per se. It was the Saturday Night Live Band and a bunch of other players. So Jim Pugh and Dave Taylor were there. John Faddis, Lou Soloff were there. Uh, our horn section with Ronnie and me and Lawrence Feldman and Alan Rubin and Tom Malone, uh, Ray Chu, Chris Palmero, Leanne Pendarvis, Buddy Williams, Spinoza, uh, George Wadinius. Uh, everybody looks so young and beautiful and relaxed and happy. It's lovely. But uh, on the same Saturday Night Live show, not on the night that this happened, but one night Ronnie started a solo on a funk tune of Leon's, really funky, you know. And Ronnie started his solo on the major seventh of a of, of funky dominant seventh chord, you know. And he just laid on it and kept playing it, you know. And the whole band is looking at him. And then finally, Ronnie takes his horn down and he goes, just kidding. <laughs> So, you know, Ronnie, to me, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, he was the greatest baritone, jazz baritone. Sax. It, Ronnie was more than that. Ronnie was one of our greatest jazz players to me. He, he had everything. His time was so great. His sound, his inventiveness, his humor, his, he just had everything, you know, and and listening to him play, and playing beside him for all those years. Uh, that's a gift. 
So this is that, uh, that clip. About, uh, what, would you like an introduction? About, a time for us. Tom Harris. Express yourself. Right. Express yourself. yourself with the changes. <laughs> Lou Marini, everybody. Blue Lou. Who knew? Ronnie's such a trip, man. So I had to play, I run the Syracuse Jazz Festival. I founded it about 40 years ago and I used to run the Detroit International Jazz Festival. Ronnie played for me many times in many configurations and he was always amazing. I mean, I never, we had a guy in upstate New York who was pretty good by the name of Nick Brignola, but when I heard Ronnie, yeah, Nick Brignola, you can clap for Nick Brignola, man. You bet. And I saw, you know, I work with Jerry and Pepper, and I, I saw a lot of the great Barry players. In fact, one of them's here. Uh, something happened with the Steely Dan tour, and Donald and Roger Rosenberg came in tonight and made it. Roger, the great Roger Rosenberg. who calls Ronnie the best he ever heard. I think we all feel that way, uh, and we all miss him terribly. Um, what I take away from that clip that Lou shot was just that smile of Ronnie's, man. I mean, he had that smile. It was like that cool hand Luke smile, you know what I mean? It was, uh, he was cool. He was cool, and uh, he was a bad man. He was a great, great player. His sister is here tonight, Linda, formerly Linda Cuber. Linda is in the front row. We have all these former Cubers in the audience, but... Uh, um, so anyway, Ronnie played, one time he played with Dr. John's big band. He played the festival with Elvin Red Tyler. And I mean, he smoked, he just smoked. Another time he came up and played with Cornell Dupree. Uh, Les McCann, Jerry Jamat, Buddy Williams. That was one of your bands, wasn't it, Roberta? You put that thing together. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I mean, w w the Soul Survivors. I think they call them the Soul Survivors. And, uh, um, and he came with his own band, and, and he came in so many configurations. But every time he came, he brought it. And every time he came, he was great. I just never saw anybody with that much soul. And, and when my wife Kathy and I uh, were honeymooning at the San Sebastian Jazz Festival in, uh, uh, in the Basque Country in Spain, we we're in an ancient walled courtyard. And uh, we're standing with Herbie Hancock and Solomon Burke and Van Morrison and just enjoying ourselves. And the band was Soul Bop. And it was Randy Brecker and Bill Evans and Jonathan Blake and Chris Mendoki and Ronnie, man. So imagine we're in this 
ancient stone walled courtyard in Spain and there's these bass cats are walking around with these giant hats, man, these giant berets. And I mean, Ronnie just took us to a whole other place and everybody just stopped. I mean, Herbie was like, I mean, we were, it was that, he was that. I loved him, I'm honored to be here. I'm thrilled to be with all of you who love him as much as I do. Um, I will try to fight back the tears. Um, they just don't get any better and you just can't replace them. One of the first cats he played with was the great Bobby Broom and uh, he'll be coming up in a minute with uh, Boris Kozlov and Chris Parker. Before that, we have a little video from uh, a tribute from the great George Benson. About the great Ronnie. What can I say about the great Ronnie Cuba? We were all 22 years old. We were going to burn New York down, and we almost did. <laughs> Between myself and Dr. Lonnie Smith, as he was known before he passed away, he was Lonnie Smith to us, and um, the drummer, whose name I can't remember now, but we cut some great records for CBS Records and uh, and Blue Note with Lou Donaldson. Ronnie Cuban was an exception. He was Polish born, highly intelligent, quiet man, but when he picked that horn up, a lot came out. He blew, blew the world apart. I miss him a lot. Pick up his records and you know what I'm talking about. Thank you. The great George Benson. Thank you, George. I'd like to invite Bobby Broom and the great bassist Boris Kozlov and the wonderful drummer Mr. Chris Parker to the stage, if you would. There they are. All right. I'm just going to say a couple of words. First of all, Frank made a mistake. He did not mean the great Bobby Broom. He meant the great George Benson. That was one of Ronnie's first, uh, first gigs uh, uh, on the scene, as it were. Um, I met Ronnie through those records primarily, and then I actually met him, and I don't really remember how, but he hired me to play in his band, and I was a little boy, like 17 or 18. And uh, it meant the world to me because I'd heard him on those George Benson records, you know. We stayed in touch, and he was instrumental throughout my life in this music. He called me one 
night in the 90s, mid 90s, and gave Dr. John my number. And I wound up working with Dr. John because of Ronnie for six years. So after I left Dr. John, I called him and I said, were you pulling my leg when you used to say, let's do another cookbook record? He used to say, let's do another George Benson cookbook record, you, me, and Lonnie. And I'd always blow him off like, come on, man, don't say that. That's blasphemous. But I called him and I said, I have an opportunity to make a record. Were you serious? He said, yeah, I was serious. So we made a record. And we played this tune and actually recorded this tune on Ronnie's record called Cubism, and then again on my record, Modern Man. This is called Ponta Grossa. <laughs> Thank you. 
I guess that's it. Bobby, I wanted more. Bobby Broom, <laughs> Boris Kozlov on bass, and the great Chris Parker on drums. Wow. So, these things have been happening for a very long time because of Juan Garcia Genzel, John Genzel, who was a neighbor, yes. John was pastor of St. Peter's Lutheran Church. He was born in Puerto Rico, and he was raised Roman Catholic, but he came to New York and found his way here and found his way to a jazz ministry. And he became pastor of the church, and then he became the official pastor of the jazz community in New York, and eventually he became pastor emeritus. And along the way, he conducted tributes here to Duke Ellington, uh, the, the greats of our music. And uh, I remember attending one not that long ago for, for the great David Fathead Newman. This has always been a special gathering place uh, for those of us who love this music, have devoted and dedicated our lives to this music, and, and uh, whose life is this music. And uh, he understood that. He got that. And people used to question him and they said, listen, man, your flock is a little strange. There are a bunch of jazz cats. Don't you find that a little, uh, you know, weird? And he said, and I quote, that's the kind we want in church. The good ones can stay home. <laughs> a church is a congregation of sinners, not an assembly of saints. Um, a beautiful man who created a lasting memorial to our music and the giants of our literature. Uh, we are forever indebted to him and so grateful to be here tonight. Roberta wants me to read this letter, but I, I think it's too many things in a row for me and I'm boring. So I, I'd like to bring up our next artist if it's okay with you and I go off script a little bit. Uh, we have a musical selection I didn't see him, but I'm assuming he's here. The great Joe Lovano. Joe, are you here? Where's Joe? Hey, man. Joe Lovano. Joe Lovano, everybody. Ronnie Barrage on drums. The great Will Lee on bass. Where's Will? Fredo, I know you're out there somewhere. And on drums, once again, Mr. Chris Parker. Tofi, is he back? What did I say? Ronnie Barrage on drums. I'm sorry, man. I'm reading the wrong notes. Chris is going to do percussion, Ronnie. At least that's what the notes said. My bad, man. You know, listen, if Roberta could have hired a pro, she would have hired a pro. She got me instead. I can't help it. Is Chris joining you on percussion or no? Oh, Brian Charette on keyboards, man. Brian Charette over there on keyboards. Okay, man. Joe Lovano, everybody. Hello, hello. Thank you. Oh, wow, the legendary Ronnie Cuber. Mm -mm. Well, he was such an inspiration for me since I first heard him on these recordings with George Benson and Lonnie Smith. And uh, 
I came to New York in the mid-70s playing with Lonnie Smith and Brother Jack McDuff at that time. And uh, Ronnie's music and his legend uh, loom large for me then and now. Uh, Steve Slagle, Billy Drews, and Keith O'Quinn had an apartment up on uh, West End Avenue that I stayed when I first came to town. And Ronnie lived across the street. And so he was one of the first folks that I met in New York that uh, was, he, he was just an inspiration, man. And hearing him on those recordings with George Benson, how he really called, he had a call in his sound and played with so much passion and ideas it was a thrill to meet him and his family then, Roberta, and, and uh, through the years we had a chance to play a handful of times. More recently at the Blue Note with Conrad Herwig for the Joe Henderson um, Latin, Latin side of Joe Henderson, uh, which we recorded live that week. And Ronnie was calling the spirits, man. It was, it was amazing to be in an ensemble with him, with his sound and energy and dynamic and flow, the way he played, man, and his ideas. Uh, that recording was nominated for a Grammy that year, and uh, we had a lot of fun feeding off each other, you know, in the essence of the music. Francois Louis, who was just mentioned, a very close friend of mine, uh, who I met in the early 80s, and he started making some mouthpieces for me, which I play today. This is a, this is a handmade wooden mouthpiece. But back in around, I guess it was 1987, I was at the Nîmes Festival in the south of France. I was playing with Henri Texier on bass. It was his ensemble with Aldo Romano on drums, Dewey Redman, tenor saxophone, and uh, Kenny Wheeler on trumpet. And Ronnie was there with the Gad Gang, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Francois came to the festival, and I introduced him to Ronnie told Ronnie I was playing this wooden mouthpiece, and, which he wasn't so interested in the wooden mouthpiece. But Francois was developing a solid silver mouthpiece. So they were, got together, spoke about some things, and uh, Francois sent him a mouthpiece some months later, which he fell in love with right away, and called Francois to make him another one. So since 1987 or so, or 89, that late 80s, that was the mouthpieces that uh, Ronnie was playing exclusively. And uh, he really, he loved the, the power in them and the, art, the way he could articulate and play uh, in a free-flowing manner. And it gave him, I think it gave him some kind of different color that he loved, you know? And Francois wanted me to give everyone his love and uh, how much Ronnie meant to him throughout his life. Because he also was uh, someone who really loved Ronnie's plan. And uh, he lives in Brussels. And uh, I think from that moment on, he really got hip to Ronnie, but then he started to find out who he was through the years, and uh, it meant a lot to him that Ronnie embraced his work. So I um, just wanted to say that, and uh, we're going to play a blues and an Afro-Cuban Ronnie Kuberesque fashion. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.
Joe Lovano, Ronnie Barrage, Will Lee, Brian Charette. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. This is amazing. I look at this program and I'm flipping out, man. I just can't believe some of the cats that are playing tonight. Yes, I can. Um, I mentioned Duke Ellington, but also Dizzy Gillespie, Thelonious Monk. So many people have been memorialized in this great space um, by this great man, Pastor Emeritus John Genzel. Um, it's such an honor um, and so well deserved for Ronnie to be included in this pantheon of jazz legends. He was a complete musician, as Lou Marini said. Uh, great composer, great arranger, great player, multi-instrumentalist, and just one of the sweetest human beings in the world. Uh, Lawrence Feldman, who was in the Saturday Night Live band and other bands with Ronnie, uh, told me that the last few years have kind of been a drag. And uh, that's kind of putting it mildly. He went through a lot of changes and had a lot of physical limitations and problems. So it's beautiful that he's kind of being celebrated and reborn here tonight, musically and otherwise. It's beautiful that you're all here, and we love each and every one of you. Um, speaking of cats that I love, I want to bring some people up to the stage who are absolutely amazing. Please make them feel welcome, if you would. On keyboards, the great Dave Kukowski. Dave Kukowski. There he is. On drums, Jonathan Blake. On saxophone, Mr. Steve Slagle. On bass, once again, the great Boris Kozlov. And on trumpet, my brother from another mother, Mr. Randall Brecker. Randy Brecker. You can hear this song, right? Uh, I must apologize. I know we're in a house of worship, but this one is too good to let go. I was on a session with Ronnie, many sessions, and you know, he had a way of telling stories that were like no one else. Kind of creeps up behind me, says, hey man, I just got a call from Marie St. Louis, who worked for George Ween. She said to me, and he did a perfect imitation, Hello, Ronnie. We'd like you to play in Saratoga in the gazebo. So I says to her, I says to her, Marie, what the fuck is a gazebo? <laughs> you got me playing in a fucking birdcage? <laughs> I don't know if he got the gig or not after that, but uh, that's as far as it went. You know, uh, Randy just said that uh, Ronnie was good at telling stories, and um, this song we're going to play is, is uh, really uh, amazing. That uh, well, I, I met Ronnie in 1975, as Joe Lovano mentioned. Uh, good coincidence that we uh, moved into a place two blocks from Ronnie and Roberta. And um, uh, we continued being friends, and. Um, with the Mingus Big Band, um, when it first started, um, you know, we had charts. I would bring in charts that were like five pages long, and because Mingus' music is complicated, and Ronnie brought in this half-page arrangement of of <laughs> Nostalgia in Times Square, which we're going to play, and um, 
it was great because every note was perfect and we played it a lot because it was just one page. It was great, you know. And um, it, when we played the first time, and this is at the Time Cafe in New York in the early 90s, and um, uh, backstage, Ronnie started saying like, yeah, I, I, I met Mingus in, uh, at Times Square. That's when I first went and, went and sat in with him. And he, he told this whole story about what song they played and what Mingus said to him. And, he said, and I said, Ronnie, you got to have that on the record when we, when we do it. You gotta, so when we ended up recording it, he's the first jazz rapper. It's in <laughs> early 90s. The song starts with him telling the story. And so you gotta, you gotta hear it to believe it. But here's nostalgia in Times Square. <laughs>
Ridiculous. Randy Brecker, Steve Slagle, Jonathan Blake, Boris Kozlov, Dave Kakowski. Come on, let him hear it, man. That's genius. That's for you, Ronnie Kuber. Dear friend of Ronnie, you know, Ronnie, whatever stage Ronnie was on was fertile ground. Any conversation was possible because he was fluent in hard bop, soul, funk, swing. I mean, he was just a master. And uh, obviously his soliloquies were brilliant, but his conversations were equally brilliant and his compositions are remarkable. Uh, I encourage you all to check him out and keep him with you in your hearts forever. Speaking of keeping someone in our hearts forever, there's a gentleman here. Uh, Roberta, I know we're going a little off script here, but there's a gentleman here who wants to speak and has to speak because Latin jazz was such a huge part of what Ronnie Cuber was all about. And the great Sammy Figueroa is here. Sammy, come on up, Sammy. begin to talk about this guy. Well, I met him in the early 70s, and he was as swag as anybody could be in the world. He walked swag, he talked swag, he, he was the king of swag. And this guy, when I met him, he was already playing with George Benson and all of that. I'm going to make it short because I know there's, there's more to do here. I remember when he won all those jazz awards, you know, the downbeat jazz awards. He won like five or six of them. I can't remember. And one of them, I went, he called me up and said, hey, Sammy, what, 
come with me to this, this shit, you know. I want something. I want a bass baritone or something. And we went to the Hilton, and uh, they named all these baritone players. And then they said, and the winner is Ronald Cuba. And he walked up there. And I think Roberta, who was it? Uh, Roberta Flack was there. There was a lot of people there. Ronnie, I wonder what he's going to say. <laughs> oh, God, I hope he doesn't say something crazy. <laughs> I said, well, you know, Ronnie's going to say what the hell he wants to say, you know. And he got the award, and he, and he man, this, this shit is incredible. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank, uh, well, I already thanked Roberta many times, you know. I know. I want to thank Ronnie Cuba. He's the winner. Ronnie Cuba, the baddest cat. I said, oh, shit. And, uh, you know, I could, I could sit here, I could stand here and tell you hundreds of Ronnie Cuba stories that are so original and so amazing. But the one thing I want to say is that he was probably one of the most eloquent players in the world, not only rhythmically, harmonically, in every aspect this gentleman captured, he mastered his instrument like no human being, and I say it with all my heart because nobody not only had those chops, but he really knew how to fuse all the rhythms and the sound together, like Miles Davis, Freddie Hubbard, these guys who mastered their instruments, Ronnie Cuber was a master of the baritone. God bless him. I am, uh, I was a fan of his. He was my brother. I loved him with all my heart. And I thank Ronnie Cuba for giving me the opportunity to play with a great master, a Puerto Rican from the Bronx, playing with this gentleman. I am honored. I love you, Ronnie, wherever you are. I know you're up there with Miles and all those guys bopping your way to way. And I love you. Thank you. How y'all doing? You having a good time? I realize it's bittersweet and the occasion is a somber one, but uh, from where I'm sitting, also a very beautiful one. I'd like to, uh, I don't know, man. I, there's so many great players that have been here tonight. I'd just like to bring them all up here on stage for an acknowledgement, a bow, and if they bring their instruments, whatever happens, happens. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, I'd like to welcome back to the stage, Mr. Lou Marini. Blue Lou. Bobby Broom. Boris Kozlov. Chris Parker. Joe Lovano. Come on, Joe. Ronnie Barrage. Will Lee. Dave Kikowski. Randy Brecker. The great Jonathan Blake. Steve Slagle. Mr. Brian Charette. You guys want to do something? Anybody want to do something? Brian, I know you got something for us, right? You got a little something? Something, something? Let's hear it for these incredible artists, these incredible jazz giants, these legends. They're trying to figure out what tune they know. The great Paul Schaefer is here, too. I want to acknowledge the wonderful Paul Schaefer. Mr. Paul Schaefer, everybody. We have no idea what's happening, but isn't that great?
Thelonious could do that. Thelonious could do that. Thelonious Spear Monk. Rhythming. Oh, come on, people. You got to do better than that. Mr. Joe Lovano on tenor saxophone. Steve Slagle on alto. The great Randy Brecker on trumpet. Hey, baby. Lulu Marini on tenor sax. Jonathan Blake. Ronnie Barrage channeling Leon Thomas. Chris Parker. Will Lee and Boris Kozlov on bass. Dave Kakowski, Brian Charette on the keyboards. Gentlemen, to the top tier for a photo out. One of the great photographers in all of jazz is here tonight, Miss Enid Farber. She's gonna take a picture of the guys. To the top stair, if you would, gentlemen, top tier. Okay, before we depart, um, yes. I was, yeah, no, 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 no. It takes a woman to bring all this together. Yes, you can whoop whoop. And I'd like to say thanks to the incredible lady who produced this evening's event and was nice enough to invite us all to be here, um, the great Roberta Arnold. Roberta Arnold, come dear. One, is, one of jazz's greatest advocates for the last 50 years, Roberta Arnold. I'd like to invite Sammy Figueroa, uh, uh, Ronnie Cuber's sister, Linda, please come up. Please come up. Hang on, baby. Anybody else want to get in this photo op? Paul, you want to come up? Paul, where's Paul? Come on, Paul. Am I missing anybody? Roger Rosenberg, one of the great baritonists. Julie Loken. Come on. Hey, Enid, you got about two seconds to do this. Yeah, it's a great day in Harlem. It's a great night in uh, Lexington and 54th.
Oh man, this is beautiful. How about another hand for all these giants of our music? These brilliant, brilliant, brilliant artists. No, I don't want to be it. Yes. My nephew Brian Charette's going to take us out with uh, a little musical prayer that you will all recognize, all right? Brian Charette on the keyboards. This is for you, Ronnie. Thank you, Will. One final thanks to all of these incredible musicians who performed tonight in Ronnie's honor. And our thanks to you for coming out to pay tribute to Ronnie, the great Ronnie Cuber. Ronnie, rest in heavenly swing, man. You were and always will be the greatest man. Thanks for coming to St. Peter's tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. We really love you. Thank you.